Hey friends, so today I'm going to talk about the notion of continuous function. So first we are going to see the definition of a continuous function and then we will try to understand this definition with the help of the graph because once we have a graph it's very easy to understand the concept okay and then we will see why we need all the three things for a continuous function okay and after the graphical thing we will jump to two three examples okay so what do you mean by continuous function so if you have a function from real number to real number and you take a fixed real number a is my fixed real number and i want to check the continuity at this point so when i will say a function is said to be stb said to be continuous at the point a if it satisfies this three condition what is the first condition your f of a is well defined that means what your function should have some value at that point okay if the function is not defined at a then there is no point of talking about continuity so you should have something f of a should be there so therefore this is obvious f of a is well defined second thing is when you take the limit of the function then that should exist i had uh, already made a very short and a nice video about the limit of a function you can see the link in the description if you have not seen so the second thing is when you approach this is called as the limiting value of the function so when you approach towards a the limit of the function should exist and this is not sufficient we need one more condition and the third condition is the limiting value of the function should be equal to the actual value of the function at the point a so what is the left hand side it is the limiting value of the function as x approaches a and what is the right hand side it is the actual value of the function at the point a so when the limiting value is equal to the actual value then only your function is continuous okay and if any one of the condition gets failed then your function is not continuous at that point okay so this is the notion of continuity at a point okay and now if you have a function say from i to r where what is your i it is some interval some subset of r then when i will say function is continuous over i if it is continuous at each and every point of the interval i okay so if it is continuous at each and every point then we say that function is continuous over the interval and if function is not continuous at a point we say function is discontinuous at that point okay now let's try to take an example so that you will realize that why do we need both the things now suppose if you have a graph of some function so this is my x and this is my f of x or you can also call y let me take a equal to 2 and uh, suppose if you have graph of some function like this okay so suppose here this is 3 and this is suppose 6 now as you can see here the function is continuous here also the function is continuous and here you can see there is a jump at 2 there is a jump so from graph you can see the function is not continuous at 2 and one of the reason is you can see the second condition gets violated what was the second condition the limit as x approaches 2 does not exist why because what is the left hand limit when you approach 2 from left hand side these are my x and by looking at the graph these are my f of x so for this x this is the f of x for this x this is the f of x so as x approaches 2 our f of x is approaching towards 3 so therefore the left hand limit x approaching 2 minus of the function is nothing but 3 what about the right hand limit when you approach towards 2 from right hand side as you can see this is my f of x for this x this is your f of x so as x approaches 2 from right hand side your f of x is approaching towards 6 so this is not equal to 6 which is nothing but my right hand limit of the function at the point 2 so since the left hand limit is not equal to right hand limit therefore the limit does not exist and as soon as the second point gets failed no point of talking about the third point in the definition so since the limit does not exist therefore function is not continuous okay so whenever the question is on continuity one thing is you need to check the limit so as soon as the limit does not exist straight away you can say the function can't be continuous but is the existence of limit a sufficient condition no it might happen that the limit exists but then your function 
may not be continuous okay so suppose this is my 3 and this is suppose 7 suppose my f of 2 is 7 okay so f of 2 is well defined and f of 2 is 7 and there is a jump over here so it is a continuous like this there is a jump again it continues like this so from graph you can see it is a continuous function it's a not continuous at 2 and let's see which condition gets violated what is f of 2 it is 7 so it is well defined does the limit exist as you can see as you approach towards 2 from left hand side these are my x and when I look the f of x these are my f of x so for this x this is the f of x so as x approaches 2 your f of x approaches 3 so my left hand limit is 3 what about the right hand limit these are my x so when you take the f of x as you come closer and closer towards 2 so as my x comes closer to 2 your f of x comes closer to 3 so therefore my left hand limit is equal to right hand limit because both the left hand limit and right hand limit is 3 so limit x approaching 3 minus f of x is 3 which is also equal to limit x approaching 3 plus f of x oh sorry I am talking about 2 so it will be 2 over here so left hand limit is equal to right hand limit therefore your limit x approaches to 2 exists which is nothing but 3 so my second condition of continuity also gets satisfied but is the limiting value equal to the actual value of the function answer is no because the actual value is 7 so since the limiting value is not equal to the actual value of the function therefore this function is also not continuous but suppose if we make f of 2 is equal to 3 if I redefine this that means what f of 2 is no more 7 f of 2 is 3 and then you can see as soon as these two quantity becomes equal the gap gets filled and you get a continuity over here so this equality makes sure that there is no gap it just combines the things okay well if you recall in your higher school high school mathematics such kind of discontinuity is called as a removable discontinuity okay but anyways the last condition forces the function to be continuous so that's how the definition is uh, i mean definition can be interpreted with the help of this graph so i hope now the definition of a continuous function is clear and we need the definition why do we need the definition see like if you know the graph of some function you can say okay it is discontinuous at 2 suppose this is my 4 so you can see that at 2 and 4 there is a jump so at this two point the function is discontinuous rest everywhere is continuous but so if you know the graph you can easily tell whether the function is continuous or not but if you don't know the graph then it becomes difficult to tell or it should become difficult to check the continuity so if I give you suppose function as x square plus say sine inverse of x plus pi okay so it's a bit difficult to draw by hand I mean there are softwares but then again it's not always easy or it's time consuming to draw the graph therefore one should have the definition to check the continuity at a point now let me take an example for your understanding okay here is an example so for x less than 2 my output is 3x square minus 1 for x greater than 2 my output is x plus 7 okay now I need to check the continuity at the point 2 why at point 2 because see when x is less than 2 this is a polynomial and polynomial are always continuous for x greater than 2 also this is a polynomial and is continuous so the only thing we need to check is whether the function is continuous at x equal to 2 let's go one by one what is f of 2 is f of 2 well defined uh, no so for equal to 2 nothing is given about the function so f of 2 is not defined so straight away at that point you have to say since f of 2 is not defined therefore the function is not continuous okay so that's one thing but now let's do something let's uh, let us say uh, suppose at x equal to 2 function is say pi okay so now is f of 2 defined yes f of 2 is equal to pi good now does limit as x approaches to exist that means I need to find the right hand limit and I also need to find the left hand limit 
सो वेन आई एम फाइंडिंग राइट हैंड लिमिट दैट मीन्स माई एक्स इज ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ टू दैट मीन्स वॉट माई एक्स इज ग्रेटर देन टू सो वेन माई एक्स इज ग्रेटर देन टू वॉट इज माई फंक्शन माई फंक्शन इज एक्स प्लस सेवन विच इज अ पलिनाम यू कैन डायरेक्टली पुट द लिमिट सो विच इज नथिंग बट नाइन सो माई राइट हैंड लिमिट इज नाइन What about left hand limit? When I approach two from left hand side, my x is less than two. X is less than two means I have to take this function. So limit x approaching two minus three x square minus one. And what is this? Three into four minus one. So twelve minus one is eleven. So at the point two, my right hand limit is not equal to the left hand limit. And since the and hence the limit does not exist. and therefore the second condition of continuity fails and therefore this function is still not continuous at x equal to 2 okay so this is an example of a discontinuous function okay now if i want to take the function example of a continuous function i will need to modify this example so suppose if i take this as minus 3 okay now in that scenario let's try to find the left and the right hand limit Uh, well, I will give as a homework. The answer is the limit as the x approaches to f of x will come out to be nine. Your right hand limit will come out to be nine. Seven plus two is nine. Here also two square is four. Four three is a twelve. Twelve minus three is nine. So in this case, your limit exists, but still the function is not continuous. Why? Because the limit exists, but the limiting value is not equal to the actual value of the function. so this is one more example of a discontinuous function let me modify this example if i call this as to be 9 now is this function continuous yes because the limiting value is equal to the actual value of the function so that's how you can see you have to check one by one condition even if one of the condition fails function is not continuous so i hope this example is clear now let me give you one homework question suppose you have a function you have to tell me in the comment section what should be the condition on abc so that okay they are real numbers they are finite okay so you can ignore the infinite condition so my abc are real numbers and they are finite you have to tell me what should be the condition on abc so that my function is continuous at zero okay so you can say i have talked about the zero so the right hand limit is a left hand limit is b and actual value is c so what should be the condition on abc so that the function will be continuous at the point 0 so that's the homework i expect you to comment your answer in the comment section and if you have any other doubt regarding continuity that also you can ask me in the comment section and if you like this lecture then do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you